Okay, we're gonna talk about uh, using cloud native build packs to manage your container images at scale. And when I say scale, I'm talking about how companies like Google and Heroku and VMware manage tens of millions of images uh, using build packs. Uh, I'm Joe Kuttner, and I just flew into Paris three hours ago, so I am less awake than you are. Uh, I'm one of the founders of the Cloud Native Build Packs project, and with me is Terrence Lee. Uh, I, if I didn't say, I, I work at uh, Salesforce. Terrence also works at Salesforce for Heroku. So what are Build Packs? Build Packs, very simply, are tools that transform your source code into container images without using a Docker file. What you get is uh, a, a Docker image that contains layers that map logically to your image components, uh, and it's well-structured because the build packs are uh, shareable, right? So once someone has written a build pack, you can take advantage of all the things that they've put into it without having to handcraft or artisanally copy-paste uh, your Docker file to get just what you wanted. So the build packs themselves are, are actually modular units uh, that encapsulate all the concerns associated with a particular technology, uh, like Java or Go or Maven. And then these build packs are composed together and executed by a build pack platform, and we'll talk about how to run one of those in a second. So you can use Dockerfile with build packs as an extension, but it's not required, and in fact, most uh, build pack users don't, don't use Dockerfile at all. So why use build packs? Well, I can answer this uh, by asking you a question. How many of you have uh, you know, made a seemingly trivial change to your Docker file and then realized that, uh-oh, you've busted every one of your cache layers and you have to rebuild from scratch and wait minutes or maybe longer? Cool. Now do that 10 million times. It's not, it's not really efficient, right? And that efficiency at scale is really where build packs came from. Platforms that are ma managing that large of a, you know, a set of container images need a mechanism that, that isn't so rigid the way that the Docker file is. So even if you're not managing tens of millions of images, let's say you have 500 images, 500 Java images or something like that, you know, everything's humming along fine, you're building with Docker file, you make commits and it rebuilds. And then along comes a CVE and every one of those images is now vulnerable and you have to patch it and update it. Well, to do that with Dockerfile means, especially if it's something, a change to the operating system, means rebuilding every one of those images, even if you didn't need to recompile the Java code or, or do anything else in, in the higher level layers. Build packs get around this sort of restrictive uh, linear layer caching mechanism that Docker has by introducing more advanced caching mechanisms. Uh, they can, uh, cache parts of your applications like its dependencies and not bust that cache unless absolutely necessary. And the build packs themselves know when to do that. More importantly though is a mechanism that we call rebase. And this allows you to update the operating system or even other parts of your image without doing a rebuild at all. You're literally manipulating a JSON file. Uh, this process takes the top layers of a container image and then rebases them onto a new operating system without ever running a build. And this is uh, by virtue of the ABI compatibility that's offered by uh, operating system vendors like Canonical and Red Hat. So when you get that vulnerability in the base image, you can take your, your Java layers, your JDK, your application, your dependencies, and essentially lift and shift them onto the new operating system. Cool, so now how to run build packs. Thanks, Joe. So getting started with build packs is actually pretty simple. Uh, as part of the upstream project, we maintain a tool we call pack. It's a local command line interface that is basically a local kind of build pack platform, as we like to call it. And it interfaces with uh, a local container runtime like Docker or Podman or something like that. Uh, we have different ways to install it, but uh, probably the easiest way is to go through brew. So if you add uh, using the brew tap, the build pack thing, you can brew install pack and you just get this uh, local binary, it's built in Go. And it's as easy as running pack build and then the image name. And so there's, we have a set of, uh, we didn't 
touch or Joe didn't touch on builders, but there's a set of basically OCI images that have a base image and a set of build packs. Um, and, a, and we have a few suggested build packs maintained by uh, some vendors like Broadcom and Heroku and Google that you can use to kind of just get off the run, uh, ground running and get started with a simple pack build. So you can take an app built in almost any kind of language you can think of that is pretty common and then build it and kind of get this up and running. And once you have that, you can do a Docker run. Uh, with that, you can push it to a registry. It is just an OCI image like Joe was talking about at the end of the day. And that's all we had for content, but we're here all week. Uh, so we have, we're, we're in the Project Pavilion like uh, all the other projects. Uh, come find us. We'd be happy to chat and talk more about build packs and how we can help solve any of your image building and scaling problems. Uh, tomorrow we have a Contrib Fest session if you're interested in kind of contributing and getting your hands dirty with pack and working on the project. Uh, so that's like a 90 minute session tomorrow. And then on Thursday we have two other maintainers giving a talk on uh, the stuff we're talking about but at scale and with kind of real world uh, use cases um, instead of this kind of high level view. Um, so please come say hi. Uh, we'd love to talk to you and learn about uh, your problems. And if you're already using build packs in the wild, also love to talk to you about that too. Thank you all.